The word of God is alive and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit and the joints and the marrow. And it is a critic of thoughts and intents of the heart. All scripture is God-breathed and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. That the man of God might be mature, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed. Rightly dividing the word of truth, or accurately handling the word of truth. Dear brethren, it stands written that even we who are subjected to lowliness or humiliation in our body will be absolutely transfigured into the same body of Christ as believers in the Lord who have the privilege to believe upon Him by faith alone in Christ alone, and who have the privilege that during His time on this earth after salvation, to take number one priority as Bible doctrine, and to study and to inculcate the truth, and to form a process which have to represent that holiness because if we need to see Him we need to be pure in our heart as our Lord said in the Beatitudes in the Matthew chapter 5 and it has been told pursue peace with all men as far as it has been possible in the Hebrews but when we come back to Matthew it has been told Blessed are the pure in heart, they shall see the Lord. And if we are not pure in our heart to see that great Lord through the knowledge of Bible doctrine in a day-by-day -day process, then where are we pure? Are we pure to this world? To fulfill the lust patterns of the souls in nature? Know you not that you no longer belong to your own self? You cannot walk like a carnal Christian anymore. You cannot be like a carnal believer anymore. Two words of your lust patterns to be fulfilled. Whether you go for the three arrogant skills, which can include self-righteousness, self-justification, self self-absorption, and self-deception. But rather, you need to come in a subjection of humility to learn from the feet of the Master that no flesh and blood can teach to you if it is not by the ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, to teach to you the reality of the world. Many people fail to understand the simple truth. The simple truth is that we have been here given the power of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, to go through it, to indwell in it, to learn through it, and get the knowledge of Bible doctrine through it, and apply it and if it is not the resumption of our spiritual life by rebound confession of our sins to cite a case what you have done you take responsibility that is what the word confess means homologio to speak out the same thing so that when you could judge yourself crino to know what you have done either by thought word or deed you will be taken care out of that discipline which Lord wants to impute you for your arrogance not to take your responsibility and that discipline will be now converted from suffering to blessing and that is again a day by day process day by day study day by day application we need to love the true Lord purely by depending upon the knowledge in Bible doctrine we cannot know that Lord without the knowledge of Bible doctrine when the scripture itself stands written, we shall be changed into the true glory of Jehovah, into the extreme glory of Him, according to the operation of His power, which is, enables us, which has been given over all to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Then what are we waiting in this world to look along? What are we waiting in this earth to think along? 
Why you want to still live to the flesh? Why do you want to still fulfill your carnal, senseless desires? It is a senseless. It remains at the end of the day, nothing, zero, zero, point zero, zero of your emotion to be fulfilled. Eventually, what it will yield? It will yield further sin and further a step more sin unto death. That is what it is going to do. That is what it will happen. That is what it is a process that is going through in our churches today. It is not only with the life and the fate of the believers, but also it is also in the life and the fate of each and every pastor, teacher, or evangelist. There can be no longer prophets and apostles because they have done their duty. They have laid the foundation. Ephesians 2, 11 and following, or 20 and 21 and following, will teach to us those passages. But we are here to come to the knowledge of truth, unity of doctrine, and the hindrances whichever are possible for us, that is not going to give us this doctrine. We need to arrest them out, no matter what. You are not going to get compromised. We are not here to compromise in this hand and that hand. We are here simply to the reality of the truth. And that is what you and I have been called to the praise of His glory and His grace. In love, having predestinated in eternity past, before the foundation of the world being laid, you have been chosen for him to be in holy and in holiness, without blame, without spot, says Jude 24. And Jude 1 tells our eternal security. Romans 8 1 tells our eternal security. John 10 28 tells our eternal security. Therefore, those who are in Christ now, they don't have any condemnation at all. And therefore, the power of enablement which will change our body from the things pertaining to this low humiliation into the esteemed glory of Lord as the body of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, where that is also accomplished, we shall receive at the moment of resurrection or whichever manner, whichever Lord seems fit before rapture as well. We need to go in a day-by-day -day process confirming to the real image of Christ, confirming to the thinking of Christ, confirming to the knowledge of Christ. We need to have the same attitude, we need to have the same will, as our Lord told in John 4.34, My will is to do God's work. My will is not only just to do God's work, but Get it to the perfection, get it to the completion. It is the copulative conjunction chi, will, followed by another source, maturity. It is not that we know a personal sense of destiny, but we need to make it a perfection and maturity in our world. If you are a pastor teacher and if you have been given this bona fide gift from the head of the department of the church, which is a grace gift, it is not that you rule with tyranny or anarchy, but rather you are a servant to them to train each and every believer for maximum glorification of Christ. So that it is not only your will to have a pastor teacher bona fide gift, but rather you need to show forth to the perfection and the completion in the knowledge of Christ when you have been faithfully prepared by temporary sacrifice in your life and when you have been given number one priority to learn the word of the Lord through proper isagogical, categorical and exegetical explanation of the word through the dispensing technique of dispensations. What you do? You will see that the truth is never perished. Hosea 4.6, Hosea 6.6, Hosea 4.1. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Jeremiah 9 3, Jeremiah 5 3. They are not valiant for the truth. They are not eager enough to execute my judgments in the truth. That should not be a strong recommendation for us when we stand at the judgment seat of Christ, as such, what we are losing and what we have lost. But rather, we need to be to the reality of the word Yes, Lord, we have done it. Like an unprofitable slave, that which was our duty, we have done it. And Lord, if you would have been, it would have been greater help for us because you would have done great work than us because we have the old sin nature. And to come to this reality of maturity in thinking, it would have taken time for us. But for our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, it was nowhere required for him to have the time. He was absolutely fantastic. And he did it because he was born in a virgin birth without the old sin nature. But we are born... With the old sin nature, that's the difference. That's why he's God-man. 
That's why he's the only monegini, born again. He's the only one who has been eligible to go to the cross for you and for me as substitute of spiritual death. And no longer a sinner will repent for his sins, but he will repent for the Savior and the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, so that he knows he changes his mind towards Christ. And he thinks that without Christ it is no way possible for him to attain that essence box of God. And he learns by it, by the mental ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, to realize after salvation what the common and efficacious grace work as Lord God, the Holy, Lord, Lord and Savior Jesus Christ has done for us. At the moment of salvation, by faith alone, in Christ alone, how much he has achieved. But we today, are we really worthy to stand to the written words that our humiliation will be converted into the glory of Lord? And are we really walking that glory in Christ? And that is what you and I have to note in a day-by-day -day process. The day-by-day -day process which has been really important for us to note. How much more eligible it is for us to consider for Bible doctrine. How much more important for us it is to look and realize the reality of the truth. Dear brethren, without the true knowledge of Bible doctrine, it is no way possible for us. Without the mental ministry of the God, yet the Holy Spirit, it is no way possible for us to attain the true knowledge in Bible doctrine. And greater our life in failure to understand the reality of the truth, greater will be our life as we get along without proper life. So, dear brethren, ponder over these things as we shall continue in the next day. Father, we are grateful for the word. We pray that God get the Holy Spirit to the best of these things and make it a source of blessing and challenge, sovereign Lord, for we ask it in Christ's name, Father. Amen.